My name is Misty Servia. I am your county commissioner for District 4. I'm so happy to be here with Trailer Estates tonight. Thank you all for, for hosting this and inviting us to come. Um, we have some good information, I hope, for you at the beginning of hurricane season. So we're going to do a presentation on preparing for hurricane season. Um, after that, we're going to take Q&A, and we have our code enforcement team here for that as well, and I'm available for that. Um, and then we'll close up and say good night to everyone. So Steve, you want to take right. it away? Thank you, Commissioner. Can you all hear me okay? So I'm going to I'm going to try to uh, sit, which is really hard for me. Uh, welcome everybody, a special welcome to the CERT team. So my name is Steve Litchauer. Uh, I am the Chief of Emergency Management and back in April I was promoted to Deputy Director of Public Safety. What that means is I call it my A, B, C, and E. So I have oversight now of uh, the Chiefs of Animal Services, Beach Patrol, Beach Lifeguards, and soon to be Pool Lifeguards, C is in Code Enforcement. I'll introduce you to their team and their new chief, and then Emergency Management. But tonight we're going to talk about hurricane preparedness. I know uh, I've seen a, a few of you uh, attended your CERT breakfasts a couple times this uh, this uh, year. Wish they were d during the summer months too, like I need to put on a few pounds. But uh, we'll go with that. So uh, I got back right away. What I need to get back from you is interaction and laughter because I could just sit here and go, hello, my name is Steve. How are you? And in five minutes, you would be asleep. So uh, I'm going to try to stay seated. I'm got, I got to get up for one moment a little bit later. The commissioner knows uh, what I'm talking about. But what we're going to talk about tonight is knowing your home, and that's the strength of your home. But for you, you live in a mobile home community. That's pretty simple. But this information will go to your families, your friends, and let them know and you know where it's going to be safe. Again, evacuation levels. Again, you're in a mobile home park. Automatically A, but for you to pass that information on because we know a better informed public is, is what we need. Um, evacuation tips, sandbags, shelters, one to call 311, one to call 911. So if you can read this slide, if not, I'm going to go through it real quick. So uh, a lot of people call us the hurricane police. I wish that's all we did. I could take six months of the year off and I'd be living a good life. But we're not. Just to give you, um, I pretty well got it memorized. Obviously, um, COVID. So emergency management main role was we did daily reports, reporting the numbers. We set up the vaccination sites. We set it up testing sites. Uh, applause to the code enforcement officers who were out there seven days a week for two years straight, helping us out on that. Big thing we did also was we we're the ones that brought in and distributed all PPE to hospitals, nursing homes, fire departments, et cetera, et cetera. So we were very involved in that. Um, Major fires. Um, we had a not well. It it was um, a, par, a condo fire just last week. Three apartments got burned up. Uh, before that, a couple months ago, a large, large fire at Port Manatee, a scrap metal yard. Fire department on scene for forty eight hours. That's a lot of water. Uh, and then about a little over a year ago, y'all may have been here. Uh, oh, let me stop here. Y'all, y'all y'all know what y'all means? Well, in case you don't, it's use guys plus one. So, <laughs> so uh, warehouse down on 14th Street, major, major fire, was involved in that. Red Tide, uh, Red Tide. Uh, we didn't go out on the airplane crash this past week. It was over with before anybody knew it. But matter of fact, not too far from here, about a year ago, the plane literally dropped 
30 yards into Sarasota Bay. It had its choice of taking out homes of Bayshore Gardens or landing on top of your mobile home park, and it dropped into Sarasota Bay. It was a small plane, but my, let me put it this way. A small plane anywhere crashing is not a good thing. Uh, hazardous material, uh, again, uh, last April or a year ago, April, F1 tornado right up the street at IMG Country Club. Some of you may, uh, Elk and Key Store Country Club, five condos destroyed, million and a half dollar damage. A um, little over a year ago, explosion down near the mall. Uh, construction crew was drilling, hit a gas line. That wasn't a clue enough. They went into the sewer line. The gas got in the sewer line, went up inside a house, blew the house up, killed an individual, and uh, planned events like every holiday weekend. Again, my compliments to code enforcement. They're out on that beach uh, every, well, almost every weekend, but holiday weekends out on the beach, a holiday weekend, 13 different agencies working together to make it safe for you and everyone that comes to us. So we got a lot going on, but tonight we're going to talk about hurricane preparedness. So last year, it was a little bit busier than they thought, um, but there were, they ran out of names. Uh, now, lucky enough, they probably know I have a hard time with the Greek alphabet. I'm a local. Oh, how many have lived here full-time three years or less? Oh, okay, all right, okay. I'm fairly a newcomer, too. I, I was looking at your wall, uh, that picture, 1956. That's when I got here. So been here a while, seen a lot of things. The thing with the Greek alphabet is us local folks can't speak that. So this year, because they only have so many named storms, they run out of names, they went to the Greek alphabet. This year, they're going to then take it over to another additional list, like Alex and George and Misty and whatever, but not Alpha, Beta, Gamma, uh, all that. So that's good. But six of them turned into hurricanes. Here's what I was at a conference last month. Yeah, last month. And they, in the last five years, okay, five years, 100 named storms. So what I want you all to know is don't worry about whether we're going to have 10 or 12 or 20. It only takes that one. Ask Mexico Beach when was the last time they had a major impact. Ask Miami Day during Hurricane Andrew in 92 when was the last time they had an impact. So it only takes that one. And we're going to go through times of the year and locations and all that. But so this year, it's going to be a tad. So for us, a tad is a little bit, right? So it's going to be a little bit busier than last year, but again, again, it only takes that one. What I can tell you is Manatee County's had more damage in what we call no-name storms than we have hurricanes. So let me take you back. It was here in 2017 during Irma. Okay. There is a community not far from here, actually, I used to live there, called Center Lake. Houses around the center, uh, around the lake, pretty novel name. 62 homes. They had 23 inches of rain in three days. I don't care how good infrastructure is, how new infrastructure is, 23 inches of rain in three days does not, that, those homes had uh, knee deep in water. Not too far from there, I get confused. Commissioner Shady Brook or Shadow Brook? Shady Brook. Shady Brook. Same thing. Apartment complex, condos, flooded, flooded, flooded. So that's just to tell you a couple quick things. Now, if you've lived here a little bit, you will know 14th Street by McDonald's, a good rainstorm, drive through water. 5th Street West, you drive through water. 9th Street West, you drive through water. So, um, You'll hear me talk about storms, not Hurricane Tropical or whatever, just a name. Because like Hurricane Irma was not a hurricane when it came through. It was a tropical storm. So a tropical storm here in Manatee County in 2017 between direct damage and debris hauling, a mere $50 million. 
That was for a tropical storm, y'all. And you know what else? There were people here without power up to two weeks. Up to two weeks. See, I, I, I feel I'm almost a resident of y'all. Maybe I shouldn't tell you this. The safari, safari storage over here on Florida, the closest motor home to Florida Boulevard is the gray, black, and white one. That's mine. And the reason I say this is when I got home from Irma a few days into it, I had no power. Called, hey, you mind if I stay in my motor home for a few days? And I, that's what I did. So anyway, 14 days. I don't even want to go this afternoon with my air conditioner plugging away, right? But 14 days without electric. So again, it only takes that one. So a little bit of history. When did uh, Irma come through? Anybody remember? A clue's up here. How about September the 10th? Actually, the 9th through the 11th. This is a chart of 100 years of storms. 100 years of storm. Hurricane season starts June 1st, ends December. The peak of the season is between August and October. Okay? That's the peak of the season. Who likes to cruise? Y'all can get really good prices in October and September. <laughs> They're not going. Those cruise companies are not going to put you in arm's way. No. They're so. If you're a cruiser, does it matter if you went to Bermuda or the Bahamas? You're gone. You're drinking, buffeting, gambling, having a good time, right? But the peak of the storm again. That's 100 years of when they occur. One month of the year, if I remember correctly. February, there's not been a named storm. So it doesn't, ma again, it doesn't matter whether it's, what's the day, June the 16th or October the 27th. We got to worry about that one coming through. This is what worries us. And I'm sorry, my, I've been talking since 6.30 this morning, almost nonstop. So my voice is getting a little crackly. So what worries us, and it happened to Michael, Camille back in the 60s, Andrew in the 90s, we can watch a storm come off the coast of Africa 10 days, two weeks. You and I both get tired of watching the news. Okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. We can watch it for that. What happens is when they get in the Gulf of Mexico, they go from last night's rainstorm to a category three or more, three days or less. Let me restate that. They get in the Gulf of Mexico. They go from a rainstorm to a Category 3, 4, or 5, three days or less. That's why, now what's been two weeks ago, I got to figure it out. I got to say it to myself. PTC1, Potential Tropical Cyclone 1. That's kind of like, kind of, sort of, maybe we're going to get rain. Never heard of that before. It's either you got a, tro a tropical storm or hurricane, but, and I got to think of it. Potential tropical cyclone. So kind of, sort of, maybe we're going to get a storm. But the worry was it, it was forming in the Gulf of Mexico. So we did take action. We opened three sandbag locations. We, we got a better state of uh, uh, awareness. We had county departments fuel up. We did all kinds of things just getting ready. Because if it was a major, major storm and we had to evacuate, if we had to evacuate through level E, that's alone probably 72 to 120 hours to get all those people out. And it doesn't go from beautiful skies to category five like that. You're going to be having that rain for days and days. So that's what worries us when it gets in the Gulf of Mexico. We'd rather be safe than sorry because that's what happened in Hurricane Michael. Uh, I went up there for 15 days. Um, I'm just look. There was a shelter about this size that was um, rated for 75 people. They ended up having 350 people oh. because they were not prepared. They were not ready, and that storm started getting worse and worse and worse. And those people went to refuge. And we'll talk about sheltering in a little bit. But that's what worries us: is we can't chance it. Okay, so I think I can talk to the crowd. You want to know where that storm's going to go 
You can, you can be a predictor of where it's going to go. Ouija board, y'all remember those? <laughs> Ouija board or dart board. So take a map, get a dart, throw it, or ask Ouija, Ouija, where's it come? This, see, I told you we're going to have fun, right? 100 years of storm. So tell me where it hasn't gone, right? 100 years of storm. So we can't tell you. Now, predictions are getting better and better. Uh, science is getting better and better. I'm going to have to look this up. Now, I'm looking at the crowd. Uh, like I said, I came here in 56. So I was educated here in Minty County. Any of my old school teachers here? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, so what, I, what I'm going to explain is uh, some of you boaters, right? So boaters or pilots, you got degrees. They'll go, you know, you know, go to such and such a degree and you move. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So if a storm, let's say, is down below Cuba and you see it every day, that cone of uncertainty, you know what I'm saying? Don't bet your money. But if down by Cuba, it just shifted 20 miles. Well, I'm pointing over here at Chief McCordell. I'm pointing at him, but if I went across, I see that big apartment building way over there, the same degree, we're 50 yards apart and not two feet apart. See what I'm saying? So if, if down by Cuba, it just shifted 20 miles, that could be a difference of two, 300 miles by the time it got to us. And the other thing about the cone of uncertainty is some storms are 20 miles apart or across where Hurricane Irma was two to 300 miles across. So that's the concern there. Okay, y'all got guides in the back, brand new 2022 hurricane guides. We'll talk about them in a little bit. Uh, so if, if the park needs more, we got cases. So let us know. Um, while I'm thinking of it, if someone from the CERT team could get me a head count at the end of the thing too. So if y'all would do a head count for me, but we'll get into CERT in a little bit, but hurricane guides in print, or you can go online and get a copy. They're great. They got evacuation maps. They've got lists of shelters. They got lists of things to buy. They got, um, contact numbers, a really good resource. So in print or online. Okay, so what do we do if a storm's coming? One of the most important is to communicate, to communicate with your family and communicate with your friends and neighbors. So, again, please listen. You live here, you need to evacuate level A. But if, if you need to communicate with friends and family and say, I'm going to or I'm going with, or, oh, yeah, Mrs. Jones, I know you live by yourself. Why don't you come with us? Now, ladies, would you agree that your husbands don't always do the wisest things? So oh, yeah. we'll talk about after the storm, but here it's the last one. Know when to ask for help. There's something about us we won't even ask for directions. So know when to ask for help. That's so, so important. So we got to do that. All right, a disaster kit. We used to say a disaster kit three to five days, 10 to 14 days. Because I, I opened it up with, we were out power for 14. Not everybody, but certain people. So 10 to 14 days. Uh, we'll get into uh, a kit. Okay, um, I'm going out on a line. Michigan, who's here from Michigan? All right, what do you call that uh, below your, like, your living room floor? You go down in a room? <laughs> What, what do you call basement? That's, I've read about those. Okay. So in your basement, Michigan, Ohio, wherever you might be from, Connecticut, Connecticut, you had a blizzard kit, right? You had canned goods, a gallon of water per person per day, canned goods, flashlight, radio, um, your, your medicine, all that, right? You need the same kit here except for two things. Snow shovel and fur coat, but you need everything else. <laughs> now, let me talk about prescription bottles. Let me dig into my pocket one time and I'll pull out my prompts. 
feel like a magi magician sometimes. Okay. Many of us, and I included myself, many of us have those Sunday through Monday AM, PM prescriptions. Well, I'm even, a, I got one day's worth, so just in case I don't make it home. But, right, we have those. We used to say, take your seven days worth of medicine with you. No, take the medicine bottle. And here's why, and I saw this firsthand. Your home's destroyed. Your doctor's office destroyed. Your pharmacy's destroyed. Let me ask you this. If you ran out of blood pressure today, how many days later, with everything open, do you think you're going to get that refilled? Two to three days, right, if you run out. So take that bottle with you because the Department of Health sets up what they call mobile pharmacies. So they can take that prescription bottle and say, oh, yes, okay, this is good, and they'll fill it. But do you think if you walked up to somebody and said, oh, I want this prescription? No, no. Ugh. So key things, but it's, it's here's what I like to suggest too. I, 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 I call it re-gifting. So you're going to have your uh, pork and beans, your beef stew, water, um, all those kinds of things, right? So comes the end of November, and you haven't eaten it. Now, if you really, really, really need to eat that can of pork and beans you've had for six months, go ahead. But what happens in November, December? Food drives. And I believe y'all even do them here, right? Churches do them. Why not re-gift those unused items, which should still be good, to somebody that needs it? Like I said, if you need it, use it. But otherwise, why not re-gift it to the needy at the end of the season? So that's uh, something to think about. Okay. Who's going to grocery shopping tomorrow night or tomorrow during the day? Somebody? Okay. I'm going to ask you something. If When you go tomorrow, you're going to have a list? Okay. Are you going to get 100% on that list? No. No. That's where we're at right now. Gentlemen, if you were doing a fixer-upper or do-it-yourselfer and you needed wood, screws, nails, when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, they're out of stuff, right? So, right? In, in, in good times, we tell you to stock up early. Right now, stock up because you don't know what's going to be there in, or, or not, right? So whether you're going on your daily shopping list or your do-it-yourself or supply chain's down. Um, heard a construction guy the other day say some things are three, four months behind. So please stock up now if you haven't already. So please stock up. On, uh, on the handout table, we got a list of those suggested things again, water, food, batteries, um, those kinds of things. So I'm a show and tell. I don't remember the last time I used an actual camera. We all got phones now, right? Okay. So... All right, who's been married 40 years or more? Okay, I'm going to go the lady in the third row. Would you rather have a scanned copy of your wedding photo or no wedding photo at all? Scan. Huh? Well, we'll find you somebody. <laughs> but follow what I'm saying. Wouldn't you rather have a scanned photo than no photo? So... Find somebody that can help you, Office Depot and Staples, and we'll do those, some of the folks. But family photographs that mean a lot, wills, insurance papers, all those important papers, uh, a lot of printers you buy now can. I can even take a picture with my phone and put it on one of these gizmos, a thumb drive. Put one like me. Put one in your pocket. Put one in your disaster kit. Put one in because, all right, Anybody's an insurance agent, retired? Okay. What are insurance companies in business for? To make money. money. If you've ever had to do an insurance claim, did you not have to show proof? Right? So, well, it'll probably be too late when you get out. Tomorrow, take your phone, walk around your, your home, video the exterior of your home, just like you do if somebody broke in. Video your home. Video your important things, ladies, your diamond rings, your jewelry, your computers, all that. You've probably heard that from our friends at the sheriff's office, too. You need proof. We, as the county, 
in this time of the year, we asked the sheriff to fly the the coast of the island and video it as they're on patrol in the helicopter to prove what the coastline looked like. Because can you believe that there's been some government stretching the truth what happened when? And FEMA now is wanting documentation, documentation. So at least we can say on June the 16th, this is what Anna Maria looked like. Maybe it's August, but at least we can show it, you know, what happened. So scan important documents, save them, so forth. Weather radios, they're great to have. Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, they're always good. A lot of phone apps, you can get all kinds of weather apps. Those are really neat to have. All right. So who besides us do we need to worry about? I call them our wee little ones. I'm going to go out on the line here. Well, maybe. I don't think any of you got three or four-year-old children. You may have three- and four-year-old grandkids, great-grandkids, nieces and nephews. You know what? We live in paradise, right? That's why you moved here, right? We live in paradise. The beaches, the golf, every, we live here. That's why we're here. But guess who comes to visit us from June until August? Our wee little ones, again, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, or whatever. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I hate to admit it, but I do. My little old, oh, she's seven now. My seven-year-old granddaughter. Oh, my God, if her tablet goes dead? Oh, <laughs> wow. What did we talk about? Power going out for 14 days? Again, us, us. What were we grown up doing? Card games, coloring books, board games, right? Right? Reading? Absolutely. So make if you're going to have wee little ones come visit, go to the dollar store. Shoot for $10. You could give enough activities to last a month. But, but not only activities for them, snacks too. But get them ready. And uh, I, I'll tell you what, they'll eat them up before they leave, so don't worry about that. But <laughs> prepare for the wee little ones too. All right? Who else do we need to prepare for? Well, that too, that too, pets, exactly. I call them our fur babies, right? Are not some of, to you, your pets or your children? Well, guess what? You have to care for them too. Water, food, and let me tell you, if Fluffy eats dry food, don't try to give them wet food. So make sure you take what food they eat. Guess what else they need? Vaccine papers. They got to have um, uh, bags to pick up whatever they leave behind, crates. But we have to care for our fur babies too, right? So think about that. A carrier to take them with you. So those are very important. Everyone's very important. All right. I'm going to put this up because this is a standard presentation. Manatee County's building codes. So uh, earlier than 2002, somewhere between 90 and 110 mile an hour for a what we call brick and mortar home 2012 on 150 mile an hour wind um anybody in the crowd have a relative in parish or myaka no a friend y'all got to get out there and meet people come on <laughs> oh can we get your address in the back because that's what we want you to do is find a family or friend Parish, Mayak, or wherever. And but if you have a family or friend that has a home, we're, they're they're being built strong. So a lot has to do with levels, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right. Majority of the fatalities have to do with water. Almost half is surge. Surge is that wall of water coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. And if you look at your map, up the river. So it comes in off the Gulf, up the river. Um, 2017, when Irma came through, it was originally predicted we were going to see 15 foot of surge. They evacuated the entire Manatee Memorial Hospital because we needed three, four days to get all those people out, 260 or 80. They all didn't go one place because you had this many in cardiac, this many in orthopedic, this many. So we had to find where there were room to put these people, but surge. So that's that wall of water. That's what evacuations are based upon. 
The other light is rain, and we'll talk about flooding and all that kind of so. So you know that if we get a good rainstorm tonight, your street may be flooded for an hour or two and then it drains off. But it's still, so we'll talk about flooding in a few minutes. All right, we evacuate for two reasons. The first reason is surge in low-lying areas. All right, picture Hurricane Michael coming into Anna Marie Island. If you know it, uh, and you may, Golf Drive is the main road through uh, through uh, Anna Maria. That was Mexico Beach's Golf Drive. Okay, we are also that's what storm surge does. It takes and washes things totally off their foundations and destroys those. And the second reason, unfortunately, mobile homes, manufactured home RVs and boats. So we we need you to evacuate when we give you that warning. And I'm going to I'm going to just pose this that some of these winds lately probably shook you a little bit, right? So just think what a 20 or 30 mile an hour wind would do versus a 150 mile an hour wind. So y'all know where Mike City is, most of you? Okay. Y'all know where Arcadia is? If Michael would have come in on Anna Maria uh, Arcadia would have saw 100 mile an hour winds. The winds just don't stop at the coastline. So from Anna Maria all the way to Arcadia, 100 mile an hour winds. That's pretty awesome. All right. Whether you live here in Trailer States or someone where else, we need you to prepare your home. So that planter in the front yard, that um, figurine in the front yard, that lawn chair, that bicycle. Please pick those up before you evacuate because when you come home, you may be missing that, but your neighbor may return it because it's in their living room through their window. So so please pick up those those things laying around your 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 lot and pick them up because you don't want that to be in your neighbor's living room. So even even if you live in a home, the same thing is pick those things up. All right, um, boy, gas, wow. Um, if you can afford it, a storm's coming. <laughs> gas up. Uh, Irma, again, was a tropical storm. The last morning that I went to work before the storm, I, I had to hit four gas stations just to fill up. So if you see a storm's coming, go ahead and fill up, whether you're go going anywhere or not. Because even if you don't, if you just went to a friend's house and perish, if power goes out, guess what? Don't pump. If power goes out, guess what? You can't use your debit card. So that's one thing I didn't uh, didn't talk about. Cash. I, I this is a, well with the price of things, hundred or two in cash just in case they lose power. Oh, I want to give you a tip from the Red Cross. This is a great tip. It costs you one red solo cup. And a quarter. And it's a great tool. Take that red solo cup. It can be anything. It can be a styrofoam cup. Take a cup. Fill it with water. Put it in your freezer. Freeze it. Then take that quarter. If you can't afford it, nickel will do. Put a quarter on top. Then when you leave, whether you come back the next day or the next week, if you come home and that quarter is at the bottom of the cup, it may be frozen even. If it's at the bottom of the cup, you know what happened? You lost power. And if it's at the bottom of the cup, throw out everything in your freezer and refrigerator. Pretty good 25 cents and a quarter to tell you whether you lost power for a period of time. So that's kind of a neat um, neat thing. So, um, okay, people ask us about generators. And you can see I, I love to joke around. It depends on what you want to do. They go from two hundred to twenty thousand. If you want to go a fan, a light bulb, and charge your phone, two hundred dollars. Go to Home Depot, Walmart, Amazon, wherever. If you want to power your whole house, your air conditioner, your oven, your washer and dryer, that's where you get to the mega ten twenty thousand dollars. So it's I can't tell you whatever, but if you do get a generator and you run a generator, because I know 
Irma here, right, guys? Y'all lost power for quite a bit in Irma, didn't you? So your place could be standing, but you have no power. So you come back, everything's safe, you don't have power. Make sure you ventilate that generator. Don't put it in your carport. Don't put it on your lanai. Make sure it's ventilated because, unfortunately, people die from carbon monoxide. Just like if you had a charcoal grill. Don't put it on your lanai or your garage. Put it, put it somewhere else and ventilate it. Okay. You may not know this. If the winds get 45 mile an hour or more sustained, that means it's blowing and blowing and blowing. EMS and fire quick responded. At 55, law enforcement. Hurricane Elsa last year, for a few hours on the island, we stopped fire and EMS because the winds were too high. Irma, countywide, for multiple hours, we stopped everybody. It's not safe for those folks to be out there. Between the wind blowing them over, the wind blowing traffic lights over, the wind blowing trees over, it's just not safe. So know that at some point in time when we ask you to evacuate, please do so. We want you in a safe place, and we can't come help you during those rough winds. And as we look at the top picture from Katrina, if you cannot see the roadway for the water, don't drive because you don't know what's been washed out. You don't know what's there. You don't know how deep it is. And many, many times you'll see a car floating down the road because it's too deep or it goes into a ditch or goes into a culvert. So don't drive through high water because you never know what you're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to jump one slide forward and then I'm going to come back. So this is easy to remember. MyManatee.org slash weather. MyManatee.org slash weather. Um, one of my staff members, well, I had several of them in the class, a leadership training for young aspiring employees go to leadership training. They have to do a class project. And this one um, uh, brought the idea up, and there was about five or six of them that worked on it. I call it one-stop shopping. So mymanatee.org slash weather. You go to that. Now, I think you all know that. Let's see, this is Bay Drive, right? It can rain on that side of Bay Drive and not on this side, right? You've, you've mm -hmm. probably seen that. So if you're listening to, not picking a Tampa TV station or even a Sarasota TV station, they're saying it's raining cats and dogs. And you're out on the golf course because, right, from one side of the street to another. So under the first one, forecast, I think there's about eight or ten. Uh, Parish, Anna Maria, there are li different listings throughout the county to give you a, a, a weather forecast. <clears throat> it will give you, in Mantee County, we have two different power companies, FPL, Peace River Co-op. Under power outage, it will bring up their maps to tell you where the, uh, the uh, power is out at. It will also show you Sandbag availability. Matter of fact, two weeks ago when we had PTC1 coming, we set up three sandbag locations and it listed where they were. It'll list where shelters are um, and so forth. So really, really good one-stop shopping website. You can get to it off your phone or, or the your, your computer in your home. So there's the website again. Um, here, real quick, you could, and I'm going to go through this real quick. You can actually enter your address on there. It's called Resident Tool, and it'll tell you what evacuation level you live in. Well, mm -hmm. see, I'm going to be psyche, A, because you are. <laughs> so, but this is for families and friends, too. It will see up at the top, I ran that address, and it says level CD there. And um, on this one, if you look down, third thing up, what year that home was built. So it goes back to that prior slide of how good of construction you have. So we'll have that. So this is a map of like you got in your your um, your your guide. So you can see how red is all the way up to the river because that's the way it's flowing. Uh, the little red schoolhouses are shelters. So I'm going to say it twice. All shelters are schools, but not all schools are shelters. All shelters are schools, but not all schools are shelters. 
but we don't open them all at once. We open them up in phases and areas. Which way is the storm coming? How bad's the storm? Is it a wet storm, a wind storm, or whatever? But we open up three or four at a time, up to, and we'll go over how many. Uh, on the map, I call them pineapples, but I'm correct. Those black things are sandbags. So, but they look like pineapples to me. But it will list where the sandbag locations are. Okay. We tell people now to evacuate tens of miles and not hundreds of miles. Tens of miles and not hundreds of miles. What I'm talking about, here's, here's a couple reasons. Even if you, you're new here, you know Gulf of Mexico is just up the road. You ain't going any further west unless you're a submarine or your high-speed boat's out there. You're not going any further west, right? You're not going to go south because guess who's coming? Miami and Naples and Fort Myers. So you're not going to go south. Now, you can go east on a two-lane road, whether it's 72, State Road 70, 64. So some people may go east. So everybody's going to go north on the interstate. Well, you're not going to be by yourself because uh, you'll be there with two million of your friends because if it's coming up to golf, Miami, Naples, Fort Myers, all's coming this way. All right? Now, how many of you have been up on the interstate by 301 at 5 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> That's a given day. Think, add two more million people together. Or y'all ever drive up 9th Street when there's a Pittsburgh Pirate game going on? That's only a couple thousand people. But see what I'm saying? So... If you're going to leave the area, leave, but we're asking you to go to Parrish or Mayaka, not to, you know, Ohio or Michigan or wherever. So just get, you know, out of the immediate area. Uh, find a hotel in a, in a safe area. But the problem is, is most of our hotels are built along the coast because that's where people want to go. So a lot of them aren't safe, but inland ones are off of 70, uh, 75 at 70, 64, if you can get room. But find a friend, friend or a family. We're going to talk about shelters. They're safe, and we'll talk about them in a few minutes. Okay. All right. Oh. Sorry, Charlie. I've got to move a little bit. Um, okay. A shelter is a refuge of last resort. Refuge of last resort. It's a lifeboat, not a cruise ship. Okay? So... Bottom right-hand corner, guess what? You bring everything. Your cot, your chair, your cooler. You get fed, and you're safe. There's one shelter, well, two shelters with a generator. Those are special needs. We'll talk to about that in a few minutes. Even those shelters don't have generators. And you're going to be in there with hundreds or thousands of your new friends. Okay? <laughs> Commissioner knows what I'm about to do. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. Ah. Uh, we've not met, right? Right. Okay. So um, about a little bit into that picture, that's us in there with our closest friends. We've, we've been there about three or four days. So... Okay. Oh, I remember my granddaughter I told you about? She's right here for three days without her tablet. Oh, you forgot to ask me something. Do you know what? What? What my arrest history is. <laughs> now, me personally, that's really good. No, I'm not. But no one, no one is going to deprive anyone of safety. We do not do records checks going into a shelter. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm going to try to tell you reality. Okay. All right, gentlemen, size of a piece of plywood. Four by eight is how many square feet? 32. Even in Palmetto, where I went to school at, that's right. <laughs> okay, 32 square feet, right? Piece of plywood. You know how many square feet an individual gets in a shelter if it's full? 20. 
20. Piece of plywood's 32. If it's full, see that? Again, I'm not trying to scare you. I want you to become reality. A shelter is a refuge, a last resort. If you have to go to a shelter, oh, I forgot something else. Sorry. I'm just going to stand up. All right. So you can tell. I, okay. I don't know where y'all were educated at, but I was here. We had one kid in my elementary school that drove to school. He was 16 in the fourth grade. <laughs> Think about it. So the point is, and this is a true story, during Irma, I was called about 3 o'clock in the morning. We're running out of parking spaces. How can you run? You're at a school. No, we're at an elementary school. They don't have big parking lots. They Middle schools don't, have, right? Makes sense. You know what else? George, you may have to help me in a second. You know what else elementary schools have? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Itty bitty, bitty. <laughs> Bitty, oh boy. <laughs> Bathrooms and chairs, right? So as we mature, right? Some of us do, some of you don't. But as we mature, isn't it harder to get down here? So so again, I'm not trying to scare you. It's it's really not funny, but I want you to be prepared that if you go there, what to expect. You're safe. That's the most important. You're safe. So if you have to, go there. But no, it's not the Ritz-Carlton, not even the Motel 6 with the light on. It's that. But you're safe. That's the most important. If you have to, go. If not, find a family or friend and, and go. Okay. We have 25 shelters. This year, 20 of them will be open because uh, the other ones are going through uh, remodels and things like that. So we've got 25 this year and two special needs shelters. Special needs shelters, oxygen dependent, electric dependent, and Alzheimer dementia, those three things. If you, a family member or a friend, are one of those three categories, Please sign, oh boy, boy, please sign up now and where we know, because then at the special needs shelter is the only shelter with the generator. They're the only place that we provide a cot. Gentlemen, are army cots comfortable to lay in, but at least it's a cot. Or ladies, I know y'all been in the military too, so forgive me. So a military cot, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists. But you got to meet one of those categories. Who likes to put on little get-togethers at their home? I know somebody in here. Sharon, I know you do. So if I told you 20 people's coming tonight and 100 showed up, would you have enough room and food? Well, that's what we're saying here. If we only knew 100 people were going to show up and 400 did, we're not going to have enough cots. We're not going to have enough nurses. We're not going to have enough oxygen. So please, please, please. If you or a family member is in one of these categories, sign up now or tonight, tomorrow, and get signed up so we know what to prepare for. We know enough oxygen, enough nurses, enough that. Now, the other thing we do, too, is, matter of fact, I met with some of them today. If you do not drive and you need a ride to a shelter, guess what? We're going to give you a free bus ride. But you need to sign up now. It's a bus ride to the closest shelter, not Walmart, not Publix, to the shelter. You're safe, but this way uh, we know that we've got 100 people to need a ride or we got 500 people to ride. So if you don't drive and you need to go to, please sign up now so we know that we've got enough bus buses, enough drivers, and all of that that we can time out when we need to get you to the shelters and so forth. So that's available online. All right, I'm getting getting near. Uh, alert Manatee, Manatee Ready. Again, we listen to the news stations out of Tampa, St. Pete all the time. Great, great places. But they're talking about Tampa, St. Pete. Alert Manatee, you can sign up and get direct messages from my office. Not anywhere but my office. 
on Manatee Ready, sounds like a commercial, 888-777, the word Manatee Ready, 888-777, Manatee Ready, you'll get a short text message, which might say, evacuation level A, shelter, school, Manatee High open, little short text messages. So those are good things, just a little little clue there. This is something we started this past year uh, partnering with or or laying out. It's called TIFF, to inform families first. Actually, the mother of this gal, I think is now almost 15 years ago, died in an automobile accident. It took authorities over six hours to notify the next of kin. So off of this, we've got some flyers in the back. You can register a contact uh, contact information connected to your driver's license. So whether it's a hurricane, you're on the golf course, have a heart attack, an automobile accident, uh, law enforcement in emergency, emergency only, can find out a contact. So list a couple. Don't list your spouse because maybe you're in the same automobile accident. So your spouse and a, a kid somewhere, a neighbor or whatever, but it's a good program to have. So I think it's the next one. Let's see. Mm, nope. Okay, after a storm. More people are killed or injured after a storm than during it. Because it goes back early on when I said, sometimes us people don't use good judgment. Ladies, have you caught your husband out there on the ladder trying to get up on the roof on a sunny day? What would it be like on a rainy day, a wet day, um, chainsaw accidents? I When I was with Hurricane Michael, a local fire chief was killed because he was cutting trees down and the tree fell on him and killed him. Last year, Hurricane or Elsa, when it came through, very minor, minor, minor. Manatee County had one of the two deaths in the entire state of Florida because a gentleman went out to his rental property on the beach that had flooded, didn't think about it, turned the electric on, and that's the last thing that happened. So please, please be careful after the storm from chainsaw accidents to electrocutions to whatever. So please, please be careful after. So, um, oh, here's the other thing real quick on flooded waters. Think about your garage or your, your shed. What do you have in it? Lawnmower, gasoline, oil, ant bait, fertilizer, all that. Well, if it's flooded, where is that stuff now? In the streets. Don't let the wee little ones go out there and play in it. I mean, we're... They'll get scratched, don't you, you know, never, so be careful with that, too. Um, after the storm, again, I said this earlier, no power, that means no ATMs, so um, be ready for that. This is the slide. My friends, if you're part of the CERT team, raise your hand. Oh, look at this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I don't have to explain what CERT is. It's here. It's it's so valuable to us, as I say, and we do this presentation all over. You're our eyes and ears. You've been trained. So I'm preaching to the to the uh, audience or, or the choir. Y'all know what you do, how valuable, valuable you are to the park, to emergency management, entire county of Manatee. I want to sincerely thank you, thank you, thank you for the time you invested, the things you do. A great group, so thank you very much. And I'm going to, if you're in, uh, interested in joining, y'all in the back, raise your hand if you can't see this color of bright green, but I'm sure you're taking memberships, right, if people want to join, always. A great breakfast um, <laughs> earlier in the year, let me tell you, make a mean omelet. <laughs> All right. How many of you are about ready to wrap up? How many of you heard of iHeartRadio? Y'all hear that? So I don't have a contract with them. Um, so there's iHeartRadios or three or four like that. Okay, so uh, man from Connecticut. Do you think your hometown in Connecticut is going to be talking about trailer states during a storm? No. No. I don't care if you lived in Orlando. They're not going to be talking about trailer states or Bradenton. But guess what? Now, this is going to be a surprise, and I don't get any money from them. I listen to country music. Is that a surprise? <laughs> so my station 
is 92.1 CTQ. So my family and friends, well, my wife's family and friends in Michigan, we tell them, go on iHeartRadio, tune in to 92.1. So if you listen to, and I know some of you do, uh, rap on hard rock or whatever it is, you know, could be content, whatever station you listen to, make sure they're on iHeartRadio and then tell them whatever channel that is. Because if we lose power, we lose cell phones, they're not going to know what's going on. At least if they can hear the radio announcement saying, oh yeah, power's out, but 41's open, they have a little bit better feeling than, oh my goodness, what's happened here. So just a little, again, a little pointer. So we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on all those kind of good things. And um, we have 911 and 311. 911 is for emergencies, fires, accidents, shooting, heart attacks, all those. 311 is for questions. What shelter's open? We're sandbags, all those. So difference, 911's for emergencies, 311 is for questions. So here's my contact information. Um, so uh, let me entertain questions about hurricanes, and then we're going to open up questions to code enforcement and the commissioner. So questions, and we got to walk We have a question. Mic. I'll just bring the microphone to you. When I purchased my house, they told me that I was not in the flood zone mm -hmm. because I live in the very north end of the park. Now. I'm sure that doesn't necess that doesn't count for hurricane flooding. Is that true? Right. Flood zones is that rising water from like rains and things like that. Evacuation uh, mapping is that storm surge. So correct. So flooding is a different topic than evacuation levels. All right. Who else? Um, oh, yes. You I just something. want to make, make an announcement for those of you who don't know. Uh, CERT, it's not an official position of CERT, but any of you that have pets, either get to a shelter early that takes pets, make sure you have the vaccinations in your pet crate. But there are people, I live in Bayshore Gardens next door, as do several other of our CERT members. I have contacted people in Bayshore Gardens who will foster your pet while you go to a shelter. Please do not stay in your home because of your pet, because you and your pet mo b might both perish. So if you contact any CERT member, they can contact me, who I can contact my people in Bayshore Gardens and, right. and put the pet owners and the fosterers together so that, so that your pet will have a place to go. If you're going to go to a shelter with your pet, go early because there are not a lot of shelters that take pets and they fill up quickly. So yep. thank you very much. And that's right. We only have three of the 20 that takes pets, uh, special needs automatically take it, but general is only three of the 20. So that's great. Who else has got a question? Steve, you're talking about safety inside of these shelters. Are weapons allowed no. coming through the door? No, uh, no weapons. Um, even though, it's a school, but not a school. It's a government com compact. But a safety, every shelter has a minimum of one to two law enforcement officers at them. So there is safety there by law enforcement, but no weapons or not. What else from me? All right. Here we so go. if go, I did one, a great, one more, Steve. Oh, one more. Got one more. Um, is, who is able to come back in the park after a hurricane? Do we have to still take our cards to say that we live in the park? Very, very good question. So, yes, I would take your uh, uh, photo identification with you. Now, some of you may still have a northern driver's license. So, in that case, take a power bill. Not many of us still have home phones, but if you had a phone bill, a water bill, a power bill. So, you've got a, a Ohio driver's license that says John Smith, and it's your pretty picture but then have a local maybe utility bill or power bill that says John Smith lives at 123 Canadian or, um, you know, whatever street it is. So, yes, because think about this. If, 
if and when you evacuate, depending on how bad it is, do you want just anybody coming back into your neighborhood? No, you want, and not always are there checkpoints, but when there are, we only want to let people that live in that area back. So great question. What else? All right, so if you liked what I did, my name is Steve. Make sure you let the commissioner, uh, if not, my name is Bill. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> so I, I, I told y'all and commissioner, we've known each other a long, long time. Um, and she's been through my presentation, so I've not been fired yet. So <laughs> she knew what it was going to be. So tonight we have uh, several from code enforcement. I want to introduce code enforcement's new chief, George McCordle, here. And then um, uh, go ahead, and George, and y'all stand up. And we got somebody on the mic here. Any questions dealing with code enforcement? Any questions? The, I, I, let me tell you. Uh, I've just had them working for me for a couple months. Again today, they were rock stars. They were given called in. Somebody called in a, a an issue. Went out there. I mean, they took care of it. They are truly rock stars. Uh, I, I talked about them working the vaccine sites, twelve hours a day, seven days a week, the beach. But even in their daily job, and I think the commissioner will agree with me. Again, rock stars here. So any questions from the code enforcement folks? Yes, let's. Your time. Nobody has questions on the Manatee County sweep that just came through? Here's one. Here's a dumb question. Just what is code enforcement responsible for? And uh, Can you hear me OK? Is this one working? Yeah. 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 Uh, code enforcement. Uh, enforces the land development code and code of ordinances in Manatee County. Um, generally, it's about preserving the uh, health, safety, and welfare uh, property and people. Um, very generally, uh, we, re we respond to complaints um, which are usually related to uh, sanitation, per building permits, um, uh, vehicles, in disrepair, um, there could be uh, property maintenance issues if there's a, a house that is you know, not being maintained. Um, typically what code enforcement does is respond to complaints about a property. Uh, as opposed to a police officer, uh, they would be more interested in the actions of an individual. We're interested in what's happening at a piece of property. So we enforce the county's codes that pertain to the upkeep, basically, of property. Yes. Yeah. You did a sweep through the area. Are you all done with that, or is that an ongoing thing? Uh, the the sweep is over. However, I'm not certain if all of those cases are closed. Yeah, we still have some open cases where people have not come into compliance yet. Um, again, I don't know every uh, individual officer's addresses and numbers and such and what the state of their cases are. So I can tell you that the uh, initiation phase where we were initiating those cases during the sweep, that part's over. Now we're just handling the reinspections and making sure we get compliance in all the cases. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, uh, over 90% compliance so far. And that's not just uh, this area. Typically, with our sweeps that we've done all, generally, we're, we're starting our sweeps in the south and working north. We're getting 90 to 95% compliance within the first, I think, two weeks or so, usually. And very few of those cases have we actually had to you know, go to the next step and, and go to hearings or anything like that for. So yeah, um, really good results with those sweeps so far. Uh, what makes a vehicle non-compliant? That there are different categories of uh, motor vehicle codes. We respond to inoperable vehicles, commercial vehicles, and restricted vehicles. Um, if you're talking about uh, somebody's Lincoln Town car, what would make that non-compliant? Uh, basically, the car would need to be tagged, registered, and legally operable. That's the key phrase there, legally operable. 
meaning you would have to be able to drive it upon a Florida roadway and not get pulled over by a police officer because, uh, you know, your headlights are out or your tires are flat or you don't have valid tag of registration. And again, obviously, your, your motor is working because you're driving down the road. So the, basically, the code is about making sure we don't have Sanford and Sun junkyards everywhere, right? We want the vehicles on our properties to be operable. So that's, I think, what you were asking. Is that yes? Okay. Okay, so uh, a car that hasn't moved in three years and has four flat tires, would that be something you'd look into? A absolutely. Uh, Another thing to keep. No, 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 <laughs> no. Another thing to keep in mind is, if you can see something, and you want to make a complaint about it, realize that we do have limits as to how we can respond. In other words, we just can't go walking all through somebody's property in their front yard and their backyard. So um, we do not any longer take anonymous complaints. So uh, if you were to call one in, you would have to leave your name and address. Yes, uh, state of Florida passed that law last year. Um, uh, but I, I'm only saying that because when you say a car that hasn't moved in three years with flat tires, I'm sure there's thousands of those in Manatee County in people's backyards. Um, we, we probably don't know about most of those because, again, they're in someone's backyards. If you see something in the front yard that we can access from, from the street or get evidence of with a camera, obviously we can respond to those all day long. If it is something in the backyard that maybe you can see from your backyard, just know that we would have to access an adjacent yard to respond to a complaint like that. Yes, absolutely. Uh huh. Yeah. Your typical carport where you can see. Sure. sure. All right. What else? Yes, ma'am. Um, a lot of people have, I guess, for lack of storage, uh, a lot of items stored out in front of their properties yes. in their carports. Some of them are just piles of stuff just covered up yeah. with tarps. Is that just considered unsightly, or is that a, a code enforcement violation? There is a code for unscreened outdoor storage, they call it. Okay, so the county, basically, if you're going to keep uh, or store things outside of your home or in closed garage, the county wants you to do it uh, behind the house. They would like you to keep it behind the house, uh, limit the amount of things to no more than 200 square feet, and it should be uh, screened. So other people uh, in adjacent properties don't have to, you know, don't see that stuff. Um, there, you know, if you have a barbecue and a patio set in your carport, if you have, you know, a couple small things that we're not going to say, you know, the carport has to be completely um, empty of things other than cars. I mean, there there is a little discretion for the officer to de to make that determination. But yes, if something's chock full of things, that is that is definitely a violation. And what's a good number for them to call? Um. Nine four one seven four eight two zero seven one is our county uh, code enforcement number. Uh, we are also available through the mymanatee.org, and you can also make complaints uh, or call in issues with the three one one Manatee three one one website. Um, you can reach us many ways. Also, uh, the officers working in each of the different zones, Alex is your officer here. Um, you can call us directly. Um, and if you were interested, you can get with, um, there he is. You can get with that gentleman there and he can give you our phone number. Um, we can come back and bring a stack of business cards. And uh, we, we work with him all the time. And, uh, and he calls us, uh, tips us off to things that we need to take a look at. And so... Um, yeah, you can get us any number of ways. So. What we're going to do is wrap up now because we're running out of time, turn it over to the commissioner for closing and, and we'll hang around a little bit if you want to come up and chat with us, but we're running out of time for yeah. the filming. So uh, commissioner, if you have, uh, I just, I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. 
These guys really are rock stars. They protect your quality of life. Here's another rock star right here. He protects our public safety. We are your partners. Whatever you need from Manatee County, we are here to serve you. So never hesitate to call. My cards are in the back with my personal cell phone number. You can reach me anytime. Have a great night. Thanks for being here. County Commissioner Servia, Steve, thank you guys. Uh, special thank you for the CERT team for providing all the refreshments. Please go ahead and help yourself. There's a lot of good information back there, as well as uh, Commissioner Servia's information. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>